This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to take a very simple device setup and we're going to turn it into a magic link authentication. So if we go to sign up, it's going to be the same thing as signing in or signing up. So we can put in our email address. And once we do that, we can click the send link and that'll send off an email that we can then check. We can see that we received the email and now we have this magic link that we can sign in. And this all without providing any kind of password. And as a disclaimer, I really don't like the magic link sign in because as a authentication method, I think it's important for security reasons to have something that you know and something that you have. So something you know would be your password and something you have would be like a hardware authentication key or something like that. I think that is a much more secure way of authentication. However, if your website's not really storing important data, then this may not be that big of a deal. And the nice part about this is we are going to use device to do this. So if you have an existing application that's already using device, then we're going to be able to swap that out and still have device in the background. However, for the authentication method, we're just going to use the magic link. And the other issue with the magic links is that if a user's email account is not hardened and secure and it becomes compromised, then someone who has access to the user's email will then also have full access to your application under their authentication. But in this day and age, I think having multi-factor authentication on email is critical. And if you're not doing that already, then you really should. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.